From time immemorial, humanity has yearned for peace. Peace that does not mean just absence of war. Peace that signifies sublime harmony. Men at peace with themselves and nations at peace with their neighbors. If there is a central concept that has dominated Indian thought and the civilizational ethos of the country, it is peace. Ancient Indian philosophers were aware of the fact that fruits of peace are for all to share and delight in. When peace reigns, pursuit of prosperity is facilitated and the spirit soars. The march of scientific progress has unfortunately brought with it weapons of mass destruction. Technological developments of armed soldiers rendering them capable of inflicting untold misery on innocent civilians. Violence on an unprecedented scale has been the late motif of the first half of the 20th century. For years, the Indians had been struggling to throw off the colonial yoke. The advent of Gandhi, like a gust of fresh air, had revived the masses. The legacy of Gandhi continues to be a living presence, guiding mankind like a beacon of light. Gandhi is recognized, with Buddha and Christ, as an apostle of peace. It was Nehru who suggested, before anyone else, a standstill agreement in 1954 to suspend nuclear testing and move towards disarmament. The Indian stand has ever since been unequivocal. We stand for peace and global disarmament. Peace is indivisible and can only be enduring when it is based on a just and equitable world order. Discriminations and disparities can only subvert peace. To safeguard peace, Nehru fashioned the policy of non-alignment. And to keep India outside the conflict, to combat militarization, and to slowly but steadily extend the area of peace, India pioneered non-alignment, which won enthusiastic adherence, and soon the idea became a powerful movement. Countless underprivileged have been enabled to enjoy the fruits of peace. Hundreds of millions today have access to better nutrition, better health, and access to education. Tribal communities residing in remote corners of the country have gently been brought into the national mainstream. Those condemned to live in servitude and bondage before independence have broken the shackles that fettered them. No one today is prepared to accept an existence that is deprived and degrading. Peace has meant restoration of national pride and dignity for the individual. Years of peace have witnessed a steady march of progress. India and Indians have always been in the forefront of this battle for peace. However, we must never forget that only a peace between equals can last. Where there is no brotherhood and equality, there peace cannot prevail, not for too long. Today, India is a nuclear weapon state. This is a reality that cannot be denied. India becoming a nuclear weapon state is consistent with its policy of peace. We do not intend to use these weapons for aggression or for mounting threats against any country. These are weapons of self-defense to ensure that India is not subject to nuclear threats or coercion not intended to start an arms race. One-sixth of mankind cannot be denied its legitimate place in the comity of nations. Our nuclear policy has always been marked with restraint and openness. Indians have never violated any international agreement. The restraint exercised for 24 years after having demonstrated our nuclear capability in 1974 is itself a unique example of restraint. In the 50th year of our independence, we stand at a defining moment in our history. The revolutionary Indian mystic and internationalist, Sri Aurobindo, talked of a religion of humanity, a religion that would permanently abolish war, cruelty of all kinds, and the degradation of any human being, eliminating the oppression and exploitation of man by man. The spread of this new faith cannot be achieved by treaties and covenants. 
It is only the passion for peace in the minds of men that can rid the planet of the scourge of war.